Hello again. Uh, welcome to the fifth part of this tutorial on localization using underwater networks. I am Prasad and good to see you all again. So what have we learned so far? First, you learned about the two node uh, and three node networks where you looked at the transmitting and receiving information and you also looked at the concepts of medium access control when you have more than two nodes in the network. Then we increased the network size further as shown in this figure and looked at how routing the information uh, over multi-hop links can be achieved. This is useful when network is not fully connected and was important to understand in configuring networks. Then we wanted to do something more useful with this network that we simulated and utilize its capabilities. So you learned how to get the data from sensors sitting in the water to a network node that is connected over the internet also shown here in this figure. Again, a very important and practical aspect that gives you understanding of where such practical networks are useful. So what shall we learn next? Underwater localization. So underwater localization is a topic of great interest and in study with increasingly applications driving the need for better solutions. As the ocean attracts great attention on environmental issues, scientific as well as military tasks, the need for the use of underwater mobile robotic systems have become more apparent. A robust underwater localization and tracking solution is something that is of immense importance in enabling many useful applications using underwater robots. Great efforts have been made in developing autonomous underwater robots or vehicles to overcome scientific and engineering problems. And AUV localization is a topic of significant importance today. Other applications arise out of it, such as diver tracking, tracking the exact path of a remotely operated vehicle in a part that is not visible by the operator. So the applications are many and it will be useful to learn how we can use an underwater network similar to what we simulated in localizing a mobile node underwater. But before we get into it, let us take, briefly take a look at typical configurations in which underwater localization or positioning solution exists today. Traditionally, the problem of underwater localization has been addressed in various ways. Dead reckoning based inertial navigation systems and Doppler velocity logs is a common means of obtaining accurate information such as acceleration and speed with respect to the seafloor. Position can be estimated by integration but is subjected to unbounded growth in error and therefore may not be practical for long-term navigation. Another approach is one of deploying beacon nodes akin to the GPS satellites in the terrestrial networks. These underwater beacon nodes may be employed for long-term underwater positioning. Many configurations are available for these beacon-based systems such as long baseline, LBL, short baseline, SBL, and ultra short baseline, uh, USBL. These configurations are as shown in this figure and are mainly categorized based on the distance between the beacon nodes employing for positioning. Since we simulated a network, we can use some of the deployed nodes to be beacon nodes and try to estimate the location of the node in the network. What I will want you to understand and take away from this slide is the terminology that we will use in the later slides. Target node and a tracker node. A target node in the network is the one whose location needs to be tracked like an EUV or a diver. Whereas a tracker node is a node in which the network which consumes the estimated location of the target node. This could be the one, um, one of the beacon nodes or this could be a user application which is trying to visualize the track of the mobile node or this could be a target node itself when the target node itself wants to know where it is located. So with that terminology clear, let us now take a look at an example of how we can uh, do this in practice. So we will use a part of the network that we developed before for this. We will treat these three network nodes uh, that we used earlier as beacon node one, beacon node two, and beacon node three. We will deploy a new target node at a known location in the simulator. For simplicity, in this application, let us configure all three beacon nodes to have a surface expression so that they can be accessed over a terrestrial link. Next, we need to ask, who is the tracker node in this network? 
for this application let us use a python application which can interact with these beacon nodes and estimate the location of the target node so this python application connects to each of these beacon nodes over a tcp ip link once a connection is established uh, the application can talk to beacon nodes seamlessly although we are using a python application please note that we could have used a Java or a Groovy or a Julia or a C application running externally on one of the beacon nodes as a tracker. The choice is really up to the developer of the application. The important point to note is that tracker should be able to talk to other beacon nodes in some way or the other to share information easily. Okay, so let's try and get this one up first and then we will move further. So I will try and share my terminal from which I will launch the simulator ID first. So you already know how to do this. That should open the IDE, which I will share with you once it is up. And now that you can see it, uh, you can navigate to tutorial network part five dot groovy, the simulation script uh, inside the samples folder. And here you can, let's look at uh, the four nodes that we have deployed here. So, as we saw in the slide, we need three beacons. So that is, uh, so we have named three nodes to be beacon one, beacon two, and beacon three. The addresses are one, two, and three respectively for the three nodes. The location um, are similar to what we used earlier in the network. Now, uh, so the node one is at um, zero, zero. Node two is at one kilometer from node one and beacon three node is at this particular coordinate. For, uh, for us to be able to talk to these beacon nodes over uh, using Python application, uh, we need to enable API in the simulator. Uh, what this does is that this allows us to talk to uh, these beacon nodes uh, using TCP IP. Uh, so we will do that. Uh, so now that we have deployed the, these three nodes, the fourth node would be a target node as we saw in our slides. So this target node is the node um, whose location we want to estimate. So the, this, this target node is actually deployed at one kilometer comma one kilometer. So when we actually estimate the location of this target node, uh, this should come close to uh, one kilometer or comma one kilometer. So note that for simplicity, we are only tracking uh, the position in X and Y for this demonstration, uh, but this could be extended, uh, the same principles apply. All right, so let me run this simulation first. And let us look at the map. So as you can see here, we have node one, node two, node three, and the target node here. So we have the four nodes in the simulator. Now let's try and look at how we can start the Python application. So to use Python application, you will need to install a couple of things. Uh, let me show you what all you need to install. So you need Python, uh, which should be in your machine. Uh, once you have Python installed in your machine, um, you can install a module called UnitPy. Uh, if you do not have UnitPy, uh, once you install using pip install UnitPy, this should um, install both UnitPy and FugaPy modules uh, into your Python. Uh, package. 
Um, so I will not do this because I already have uh, unit pi and fig pi installed. Apart from this, what would be good if you are running the same code that I will run in your uh, exercises, then I would urge you to install ARL pi, uh, which I'm using for plotting uh, in my code. Uh, you may also need SciPy. Uh, if you don't have already, you can install SciPy and NumPy. So these are the few packages that you will need for running uh, this Jupyter notebook that I will be running uh, and to show you the demonstration for localization. So I will open a Jupyter notebook here. And I will share my screen so that you can see it. Um, so you can see uh, tutorial 2020 IPI NB, which will be, which is provided in the resources folder. Um, so I will click on this and this will open up the Uh, the notebook for me. Uh, so what we are trying to do here is in the first cell, uh, we are importing just certain modules like NumPy, SciPy, ARLPy and UnitPy. So let's run that first. And that is done. <clears throat> Once we do that, the first thing that we want to do is we would like to connect to beacon node one. In order to connect to beacon node one, uh, we in unit stack, we have a unit socket API, uh, which can be used to do that. So uh, we can open a connection over this port, uh, uh, 1101, which we enabled in the simulation. And we can then <clears throat> get the node agent and let's do that. So we have opened a connection, hopefully. I should be able to read the location of node one. And it tells me that the current uh, location of node one is zero, zero and minus five, which seems to be correct. Uh, we, this is what we actually set up in the simulation. Node beacon node one was indeed at zero, zero. Next, we will connect to beacon node two. Uh, so we again open a unit socket connection and we get the um, node two agent here. So let's do that. And let's try and read the location. And we can see that this is, is at thousand comma zero, which uh, is one kilometer from node one which seems to be correct, which is what we actually deployed in the simulation. And finally, we will also connect to node three from this application. So let's do that similarly, and we can see the node location seems to be correct, which was about 1.5 kilometer comma 500 meters. So this seems to be correct. <clears throat> just, to, just for our visualization, uh, which will give us a good view of uh, whether it looks similar to the map that we, sh uh, that we uh, saw in the uh, simulator. Let's try and plot these uh, node locations. And uh, it seems correct. So we do have uh, beacon one node and beacon two node in a line about one kilometer apart. And we have node three here. So, now, in this application, we do not know where the node target node is. And our, um, our objective really is to figure out where the target node is. So let's get back to the slides and let, let us uh, move forward in finding uh, how to do that. So what have we achieved uh, up till now? We have opened connections from our tracker 
that is the Python application to each of the beacon nodes. We checked that we can get information from the beacon nodes on the Python application by checking the node location of each of these nodes. Um, so now from Python application, we can instruct beacon nodes to measure distances to target node. The measured distances R1, R2, and R3 should be available at the Python application. Once we have these measurements available at the Python application, the user can estimate the location. Let us try and do that next. So I will go back to the Jupyter Notebook that I was sharing earlier. That is the one. And let's try and measure ranges to all the nodes now. So we have uh, a ranging agent uh, available in unit stack, which can be used for measuring uh, ranges to other nodes which are also running the ranging agent. So let's try and do this. Uh, so we get the ranging agent uh, handlers on all the uh, beacon of running on all the beacon nodes in the Python application here by running that code. Um, so first step is to get um, the range from node one to node four. Node four is also the uh, the uh, target node. So let's try and do that. Uh, so this is just to flush any pending messages in the gateway. Um, so the first, so this is an important step where we are actually sending a message uh, from the Python application to the beacon one node, um, instructing it to measure range to node four. Remember that the target node has a address of uh, four. So we need to send a range request. A range request is just a message in unit stack, which is used for measuring range. So we are sending this message, which requests ranging agent running on beacon node one to measure range to node four. So let's do that. So once we do that, it replies with a message agree. <clears throat> saying that it agreed to actually uh, measure the range and it should have been transmitting packets and receiving packets in order to get the so once we do that <clears throat> we can see that the range measured was about 1400 14.4 uh, about about 1400 uh, meters, I would say. Uh, similarly, let's try and measure range from node two to node four, that is node two to the target node. And let's do that. And um, now let's wait for it to give us the range and it is about thousand uh, meters. Uh, we'll do the similar thing with uh, beacon node three. And let's look at the result here. And this is about 700 meters. <clears throat> so now find the location of node four. So given that now we have measured ranges from all these three uh, beacon nodes to the target node, uh, we have this information now. We have the ranges uh, from all these three nodes. So how do we <clears throat> figure out the uh, location of node 4. So this problem is quite uh, simple. Uh, there are many different ways of doing it. So one way of doing it is just minimizing least square error. The so PI uh, is the location of the ith node, ith beacon node, <clears throat> and RI is the distance that you measured from beacon node I to the target node. And what we are interested in is finding x, which basically minimizes this function, this cost function. So <clears throat> here is the code to implement the same. Um, so that takes in range, uh, the three ranges that we measured to the target node and 
here is the optimizer, which basically minimizes uh, this cost. And we randomly initialize the point and <clears throat> we look at the solution that we get. Um, so once we run that, uh, you can see that um, X and Y position is about thousand comma thousand, which is what we wanted, uh, which is what we started with. Uh, in fact, if you look at the simulator, you can see that target node was indeed deployed at one kilometer comma one kilometer. And this is exactly what we what we got here. So you can actually change the location of this node and try out by yourself to see whether you can compute the correct location or not. At the same time, we can also plot the, uh, the estimated location here and it seems to be correct. So this is at thousand comma thousand as I mentioned earlier. So note that uh, what was important here was to be able to measure ranges from beacon node to the target node. Now, this is possible when you have uh, underwater acoustic modems on both sides, or uh, what you can do is you, can, you may also have a transponder on one side. So you may not have a modem on one side, but you may have a transponder on one side. So you can transmit certain signals uh, to which the transponder will respond and you can capture the time difference and based on which the range can be computed. So the technique is quite uh, flexible and uh, one can decide on how you want to measure the distances. But what is important is that once you measure the distances, the, you should be able to assimilate the information and be able to do the computations as I did here uh, using the Python application. So this is a very simple application. Uh, what you can do is you can change the location or um, another very instructive thing to do would be to actually, I would, you can actually define this to be uh, a UV. Uh, notice that the for this node the mobility is set to true so i can actually use a motion model for this uh, node so i can set let's say a uh, motion model is equal to where i can set the speed to be something like 0.5 meters per second and turn weight um, let's say about 0.5 degrees per second. And if I stop the simulation now, and if I start it again, I will save it and I will start the simulation again. And if I look at the map, you will see that this target node will now start, is now moving. And this will leave a track for you to see the uh, see the path in which it moves and you can define different kinds of motion models here now you can do more interesting things what you can do is you can go back to your uh, uh, jupyter notebook and you can compute you can write the code to measure distances regularly uh, from each of the beacon nodes and then compute the estimated location and plot on this figure to visualize for yourself on how the uh, how how good your technique is or how good your algorithm is in tracking the uh, node. Um, there are very different kinds of uh, algorithms that exist on how you can localize based on the ranges that you are getting, uh, but. Uh, that is something that you could explore on your own and play with it. So what we have provided in this um, uh, in this session is for you to be able to develop a simple application which can talk to the beacon nodes, assimilate information, and uh, estimate the location of a node. Uh, so let's now get back to the slides.
Okay, so I hope you got a flavor of how a simple localization application can be developed. This was meant to just get you started. And once you understand the concepts that we discussed, it is much easier for you to develop complex applications involving this. I will highly recommend you to try the demos in this part by yourself. The code and resources are provided at this link. Ask us any questions in the chat and we will be happy to help. In the next part, let us meet and conclude this tutorial. Goodbye.